Hi, this is Anna. Welcome to our final video in the Mind Game series. Today we're looking at the belief that self-care is selfish. So let's look at the accusation of selfishness objectively. If someone is calling you selfish because you're putting your needs before theirs, it is most likely because they would rather you put their needs before yours. Which means that person is not taking care of their own needs, but are rather looking to you to take care of them. And because you are not taking care of their needs, they're feeling impoverished or empty and they're blaming you for it. So that accusation comes from this cultural understanding, misunderstanding, that tells us that taking care of ourselves is vice, but taking care of others is virtue. And under that understanding, we have created a system in which it is least likely that anyone's ever going to get their needs met. <laughs> So, because as individuals, as an individual, only you know what you really need, when you need it, and how to make it happen for yourself. So, if you are not taking care of yourself and you're waiting for somebody else to take care of you, not only are you setting that person up to fail because they just don't have the right knowledge and the right access that they need, but also you're setting yourself up to feel kind of bitter and unloved and, and powerless in the world because you're not getting your needs met. So clearly the best option is for all of us as individuals to take responsibility for self-care, for uh, staying in touch with our own bodies, our own minds, our own hearts, our own souls, and really making choices that feel correct for us, that nurture us, that give us joy, that give us um, challenge, and that really match our calling. And we can tell that by really taking seriously our own inner wisdom. When we are willing to make ourselves a priority, we do not become less connected to other people. It's not like we're becoming self-centered. Instead, we are becoming the most vibrant, most um, excited and, and gifted versions of ourselves. And we're able to go into the world with real um, abundance and meet people on that level. And they can meet us that way as well. And so there is not this sort of codependent connection in which we're serving somebody and taking care of them. There's rather this connection of two powerful beings celebrating life together. So I would suggest that as we move deeper into the responsibility of self-care, we are actually elevating the people around us. Um, the reason I say that is it reminds me of the psychological idea of systems theory. So systems theory would say that human beings form communities that behave like systems, which is to say that individuals in a system are all connected together. So if one person changes something, the whole system will change too because they're all connected. So let's say a person in a system decides they're going to start taking seriously the responsibility of self-care. They start moving in that direction. Well, the whole system now has to move with them because it's all connected. And so all of the people in that system begin to be challenged to grow in their own uh, self-care. Now, that's not to say that people always receive the challenge willingly. In fact, systems are notorious for resisting change. And what will often happen is when one person in a system begins to change, the system will try to figure out a way to sabotage that movement and get them back where they were, which is when you are likely to be called selfish, for example, <laughs> because if they can call you selfish and you feel bad, you are likely to curb your behavior and go back to normal, which is where the system is familiar and comfortable. So it is important to know as you're making these changes that you are likely to have somebody around you try to sabotage you. Not because they're necessarily mean-spirited, but because it is causing them discomfort. So it is important to realize there is a difference between discomfort, discomfort people feel because they're being challenged and are growing and pain they are feeling because you are damaging them. You are not damaging anybody by taking care of yourself. You're not weakening anybody by making yourself stronger. That is That belief comes from the very limited perspective of the mental energy field. The mental energy field sees the universe as finite and resources are limited. So if I have more, you must have less. If I am healthier, you're getting weaker. As though the world is a zero-sum game. But we are not creatures limited to the mental energy field. We are creatures who are surrounded and encapsulated by the spiritual energy field in which we have unlimited creative potential. We have the potential to create abundance and to expand and to grow.
And from the spiritual energy field, we are cosmically connected to all that is. That means what is true in a systems theory model of a family, for example, is multiplied times infinity when it comes to the spiritual energy field. So if you are choosing to use self-care as a way of nurturing your growth and your expansion and you're creating new things and you're creating abundance, you are not only influencing your system that you're connected to on this physical plane, you are actually expanding and enriching the entire cosmos. The whole universe is following you into greater and greater abundance. That means that the greatest virtue you can do, you can, you can espouse, would be the virtue of self-care. And I would say one of the more selfish things you can do is to feel called to that and to not do it because it's easier and more familiar to let people like you because you don't cause any waves and you kind of stay in your place. Choosing that because it's comfortable and so you're not creating the abundance you could be creating, actually that to me seems more selfish than taking care of yourself. So that is what I have to say today. Please feel free to write your own responses at the bottom of the page. I would love to hear your perspective. And I invite you to join me next week when I start our next video series, which is called People Problems. I'll see you then.